Welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I'm a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln and in this video I wanted to go over phase folding which is a particular technique in detecting exoplanets. It's used in the transit method and it's particularly useful for basically getting a better fit to the transit as the, as the planet passes in front of the star. So the first thing you actually need to do if you're trying to detect an exoplanet that is passing in front of the star which is the transit method is you need a light curve of the star. Now here is actually two light curves. The top one is a star which has got a transit of a planet in front of it and the bottom one is a control star because in order for you to actually measure the brightness of the star which is actually on the y-axis there you need to basically compare it to a known star. So you should have a control star, reference star, standard star that's nearby to the star you're actually measuring and it should be fairly uh, flat in its variability, so it shouldn't really be varying lots. And you can use that to remove any changes that may be introduced from things like the system, or if you're doing it from the ground, like any atmospheric uh, differences, because you're looking for different parts of the sky. So you, you do need these control stars, and that's what that is, basically. So an example might be here. So you've got a field of stars there. The one in the centre is the one you're actually measuring that you actually want to detect the exoplanet uh, passing in front of. And then you may use a collection of reference stars or standard stars, which should remain a constant magnitude or brightness. They will vary depending on where you're measuring from and things like that. But that variability can then be used to essentially get a bit more of a stable measurement of your star you're doing. So basically, you get a single image when you're doing this. Now if you then calculate the brightness of this star you can then cr start to create a plot. So you've got a single data point then from one picture you put it on a plot of time against the brightness of the star or the magnitude or the flux that's basically how much energy is being emitted by the star so you've got a single data point there and then you just keep doing that. So you take a, take a picture take another picture then another one and over time you should build up a larger plot or data set with all of these data points on. So you've got the brightness of the star against time and if you get enough data points you should be able to fit some trend line to that or you get a best fit to those data points. Now with this one here this is suggesting that over time this star is increasing in brightness. So you can kind of fit that trend line so overall the star appears to be getting brighter. Now you do the same thing for a transit when a planet passes in front of the transit but this time round you're kind of fitting a, a bit of a model to that as well because it's to do with the actual the brightness of the star depending on where on the star it is so the the limb darkening because actually closer to the edge it becomes dimmer which is why you get this u-shaped dip but anyway more data points means you're going to get a better fit to that and as it passes in front you get a characteristic u-shape there so a dip in brightness and you can see here that that is taking about one and a half percent the brightness of the star as it's passing in front and that can give you the actual the brightness or not the brightness but the size of the planet so an example of then of a single transit so this is tres 1b and each of those kind of gray points is a single image where they've calculated the flux from the star or the magnitude of the star brightness and then plotted it against time which is along the bottom so the time actually is a date actually and those will be days so you've got like 4.84 there which will be 4.84 days from that date and then the red line is a best fit to those data points and you can see they haven't got a huge amount of individual points there so what happens is you get some fluctuations and you can see they don't fit exactly onto that trend line. So fl fluctuations from maybe s the star variability, because actually during the transit, there might have been a, a, a stellar flare, which will slightly increase the brightness of the star. And these things are quite common. You may have changes in the seeing conditions throughout the evening, because this will be quite a few hours worth of measurement. And there could be other things like errors in the system really so the, the measurement system you're taking if it's not temperature controlled it can change it's slightly different measurements throughout the night so you have to make sure that you're accounting for all of that anyway you do get some variability as you're taking these measurements so the best thing you really want to do is you want to keep monitoring this star and this isn't tres 1b it's just a, a different star that's got two planets orbiting 
but you can see that the, you've got an orange vertical line and a blue vertical line, and these are the transits of two individual planets. And you can work out from that what their orbital period is, because it's just the time between each transit. Now, Tres 1b has a three-day orbital period, and if we know that orbital period between each individual transit, we can actually chop them out of the main or much larger light curve. So here we're going to chop out three. So if we assume it's a three-day interval between each transit, we can go three days ahead in the light curve, chop it out, and then again, and then again. And then what we can then do is we can overlay them, which is actually the phase folding part of the technique. Because this time round, we're going to have phase along the x-axis instead of time. We're going to take the midpoint of the transit to be zero phase, and then that means that we can then overlay those three on top of each of us. All those data points now are overlaid. And then when we do our best fit, we should get a better fit to that. So any of the, those variability, a slight uh, stellar flare, things like that, you're just going to get a much better fit now. You've got more data points and more transits. So, yeah, you just got a, a better transit shape, which also helps you get a better calculation or determination of things like the planet's shape its size because actually to get its shape you get a slightly different shaped transit which is interesting and not necessarily the timing because if you're overlaying them if there is any timing variation then actually that won't work if you go to phase fold them you need to kind of look at individual ones when they arrive and when their expected time is anyway but that's phase folding and that is a technique where you can get a much better fit compared to just a single transit where you may only get a few data points. So thank you for watching and if you enjoy then do check out some of the other videos.